hi guys and welcome back um, thank you for coming back to my channel and for your support on my last video I really appreciate it um, this is one of the videos in my A-level geography revision series um, we have already uploaded two so if you click back and find the playlist there's two already there um, as I said before I'll be interspersing these videos with other videos on my channel like lifestyle content sit down videos vlogs etc um, this is just a new aspect of my channel and I hope you stick around. Even if you're not studying geography, this might be something useful for you. If you're just interested to learn, that's amazing. We all should be learning all the time. So stick around and see. If you've watched the first video in the Tectonic series, you will remember me mentioning that I'm splitting this series up into three sections. This still falls under the first category, which is why are some locations more at risk from tectonic hazards? The structure of the Earth is mapped using evidence from seismic waves. It is about 6,500 kilometres to the centre of the Earth, and it is believed that the inner core is about 6,000 degrees centigrade. The lithosphere is broken up into several minor parts called tectonic plates that move relative to each other over the asthenosphere. This movement is what causes earthquakes and tectonic eruptions. Tectonic plates are large, irregular shaped slabs of solid rock that vary greatly in size and move slowly. This study of plates is called plate tectonic theory. The first theory we're going to touch on is mantle convection. This was thought up by Holmes in 1923. It has long been thought to be responsible for plate movement, but it is now less widely accepted. In this theory, heat produced by radioactive decay in the Earth's core heats the lower mantle, creating convection currents in the hot magma. The hot magma currents are thought to move in circles in the asthenosphere, thus moving the plate with it. The second theory is slab pull. This is increasingly seen as a major driving force for plate movement. It works off the basis that newly formed oceanic crust at mid-ocean ridges becomes denser and thicker as it cools. This causes it to sink into the mantle and under its own weight, pulling the rest of the plate down with it too, thus moving the plates consistently over millions of years. The third theory is the subduction theory. This was pioneered by two scientists called Wadati and Benioff, um, hence the Wadati Benioff zone. This theory suggests that as a new plate is being formed, old plates are being destroyed through subduction. Two plates, one being oceanic and the other being continental, move together. One slides under the other into the mantle, where it melts in an area known as the subduction zone or the Wadati Benioff zone. This often causes magma to rise onto the surface and form volcanoes with explosive volcanic eruptions, such as those found in the Pacific Ring of Fire. The fourth and final theory that we'll be talking about today is seafloor spreading, discovered by Harry Hess. This theory states that ocean mountain ranges were formed when hot magma, or molten rock, is forced up from the asthenosphere and it hardens, forming a new oceanic crust. The new crust pushes the tectonic plates apart in a process called seafloor spreading. In the 1950s, studies of paleomagnetism confirmed that the seafloor was in fact spreading. Every 400,000 years or so, the Earth's magnetic field changes direction. When lava cools and becomes rock, the minerals inside the rock line up with the Earth's magnetic direction. This is known as polarity. Scientists studying mid-ocean ridges found the same pattern on either side of the ridges. This could have only have happened if new rock was being formed at the same time but on both sides. So the second part of this video is going to touch upon the three types of plate boundaries. So there are three. Number one, convergent, where two plates collide. This is known as destructive margins. Number two, divergent, where two plates are moving apart known as convergent margins. And number three, conservative, where two plates simply slide past each other. These are known as transform margins. Destructive plate margins move towards each other. There are three types of destructive plate margins. Number one, where oceanic meets continental. The oceanic crust is denser than the continental crust, so it sinks below and it melts 
in the Wadati Benioff zone. The deep ocean trenches mark the place where the oceanic plate begins to sink under the continental plate. Subduction can also lead to the formation of fold mountains. As the plates are constantly moving towards each other, the fold mountains continue to grow upwards. However, this is combated by subaerial weathering, so the mountains never grow significantly because there are forces acting to push it upwards and to erode it on the top. The friction between the two colliding plates causes immediate and very deep earthquakes in an area known as the Wadati Benioff Zone. Volcanic eruptions are generated through the melting of the oceanic plate, which is pushed up through the cracks in the crust. This causes explosive volcanic eruptions. This makes destructive margins the most seismically active areas in the world. Okay, and the second type of destructive margin is when oceanic crust meets oceanic crust. When they meet, the denser or faster plate subducts between beneath the other, forming again deep ocean trenches. This forms underwater volcanoes as the plate is melted in the Wadati Benioff zone. Over millions of years, these growing volcanoes rise above sea level to form separate island volcanoes, found in lines or curved island arcs such as Indonesia, Japan or the Caribbean. The subduction zone causes shallow to deep focused earthquakes which can be very powerful such as the Indian Ocean Tsunami in 2004 uh, which was formed when the Indian plate was sinking beneath the Burma plate which is part of the Eurasian plate. I know, confusing. And the third and final type of destructive plate margin is when continental meets continental which is what we saw in Nepal in my last video. So a collision margin occurs. Both plates have a similar density and are less dense than the asthenosphere. Neither is subducted, so they both collide and sediments between them are forced up to form high fold mountains, such as the Himalayas. There is no volcanic activity here, but any earthquakes are very likely to have a shallow focus, therefore are more severe, such as, again, the 2015 Nepal earthquake. Secondly, the constructive plate margins. This is formed when two plates are moving apart, um, which leads to the formation of a new crust, um, forming shield volcanoes. So the two types of constructive plate margins are when oceanic and oceanic are moving away from each other. These form mid-ocean ridges. There are ranges of underwater mountains which extend over 600,000 kilometers. They regularly break because they are a lot more brittle um, and these are called transform faults. They cut across the ridges at different rates. They also form shallow focused earthquakes, but due to them being under the ocean, as I said before, they're unlikely to affect humans. This is a natural process rather than a natural hazard. There are volcanic eruptions with this though, but this causes submarine volcanoes. Again, it helps to build new islands, such as Iceland, which sits exactly on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and the East Pacific Rise. On the other hand, when continental and continental plates are moving away from each other, they cause rift valleys, such as the East African Rift Valley. The crust stretches and breaks into sets of parallel faults. The land between these faults then collapses, forming steep-sided valleys called rift valleys. That's it, essentially. There is no volcanic eruptions, there are earthquakes, and finally, conservative plate margins. This is, again, when two plates are sliding past each other. They don't necessarily have to be going in different directions. They may, both might be following the same path, moving northwards, for example, but one will be moving at a slightly faster pace than the other, and therefore it seems like one is moving further than the other, if that makes sense. Um, this results in a major break in the crust when they move, known as fault lines. Where it occurs on a larger scale, it is called a transform fault. No crust is made or destroyed, and therefore there is no volcanic activity. However, it is very seismically active. These boundaries are associated with some of the most powerful earthquakes in the world, such as the ones in California. You may have heard of the San Andreas Fault, 
um, that was a massive earthquake that happened due to a build-up of pressure that then m released between two plates, two conservative plates that had been, pressure had been built up over time and then as it released it gave off a massive earthquake. The two plates stick, as I've just said, pressure builds up and these earthquakes are usually strong but shallow focused. However, there is one exception to this rule, hotspots. When there is a buildup of magma and a crack in the crust, even if this is not on the edge of a tectonic plate, magma can force itself up through the crust and form tectonic anomalies. These usually form small islands, such as the islands in Hawaii. Hawaii sits upon a hotspot and as the crust moves over the hotspot, there is an island created here. As it moves, that island becomes less tectonically active and now the volcanoes don't erupt. And as the tectonic plate moves over the hotspot, new islands are formed. That is still happening today. So that brings us to the end of our second episode of the Tectonic Processes and Hazard series. I hope you learned something. Um, next time we'll be focusing on trying to understand earthquakes, so tune in again to see that. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!